and culture, the old paradigm, education, healthcare, whatever. But it describes things that were working and that now are not. The question we're still in is the the question is right here is like what time is it now? What do we think is really going on? There are two possibilities. One is that we're going through a bad time, but it's still possible to rescue the old. And the other possibility is, no, sorry, it's just going to get worse and worse. This used to feel more uh, more like a choice than it does right now. But I can still hear it in the congressional recommendations that all we need to do is put consumer spending money in the hands of the American public and that will restart the economy. That doesn't allow for the fact that our major financial institutions either no longer exist or are going under. (laughs) That the whole scheme of worldwide global credit has crashed. We don't we lost the infrastructure here. We didn't just, you know, make a few mistakes. We lost the fundamental infrastructure of global finance. And then we have the housing market as well. So but let, let's talk about it just in terms of education. Because it may not be as dramatic. It is possible to recognize that American education is fixable within the existing paradigm, which is classrooms, classes, separate disciplines, teacher tenure. You know, those aren't the things we have to change. We just have to get better at what we do inside those structures. And that's what a lot of school reform has been about. Right? Just trying to fix what goes on in the classroom without challenging the notion of the classroom itself. Now, if you think that the whole system cannot be cannot support itself any longer, it's out of date. It may have the wrong assumptions, the wrong beliefs underneath it. If we believe that about any of these major systems, then this is where it gets interesting. Because there are people who legitimately try to spend their careers trying to fix. And then there are a few people, and it's always a minority, who spend their time trying to give birth to fundamentally new ways of doing the work. And this is the act of recreation. This is the action of making it better. Now, what's interesting about this way of thinking of things, I think, is that we are giving birth to the new while we're still inside the old. So we actually have double duty here. As uh, my friend Lynn Twist described it, and we've just, you know, stolen this phraseology from her. Now she's trying to get it back. (laughs) But we've talked about how we have to be hospice workers to the old. At the same time, we are midwives to the new. It's very hard. It's very hard. But there's no other way to change happens unless we go off and be complete revolutionaries and just want to destroy the system and live in a cave somewhere. So doing this double duty uh, is exhausting. So there's good reason if you're tired. And it also has some other strains and pressures that I just find are helpful to me. So the first is that uh, when people are trying to do things in a radically new and different way, we know from the work of scientists that was described by Thomas Kuhn in the late 60s, the nature of scientific revolutions, 
He just was the one who introduced the idea of paradigms. And he said that when a scientist was doing an experiment to test, at that time he was all male, to test his hypotheses, when he did the experiment, you know, we at that time thought 